Greetings. Today I'm going to talk about what you can expect from a generic GPS rescue configuration on a typical iFlight uh, bind and fly drone. This is a drone that's you buy pre-built, you bind it, and then you fly it. And this is a drone that you must buy the GPS receiver for uh, for GPS rescue to work. Now. GPS rescue is a tool that in theory you use to rescue your drone. And so we can see here that we're flying in aero mode or air mode. And we're going to activate GPS rescue. Now, if you're coming from a DJI system, GPS rescue by default is going to look a lot different than return to home. So we've just activated GPS rescue from a reasonably low elevation, we can see the drone is climbing up to its previous high point of the flight, about 70 meters, and it's flying back to where it started. And now it's descending down from 70 meters to 52, 45, 40, 36, and we're back in air mode, right? It got a little scary there. So we switched it back to air mode because the drone was making all sorts of crazy sounds and didn't have very good flight control. So that's what to expect. It's not at all like a consumer DJI drone where the drone just flies gently to around where it took off and slowly descends and lands on its own autonomously. Chances are if you use GPS rescue, you need to be ready to fly your drone unless you have a very tuned in system that you've tuned in, tested with Betaflight and put a lot of hours into. Uh, and even then you still might need to take over after activating GPS rescue. So here we go, we activate GPS rescue, drone drops, we can see that. Let's look at that in slow motion real quick. Okay, 50% slower. We're in air mode at 31 meters altitude, which I think is a little off. It's not that high off the ground. 33 meters off the ground dropping to 30 meters off the ground. There we go, 29 meters off the ground in air mode currently. We're gonna hit our toggle into rescue mode, dropping down to 25 meters off the ground. Then rescue mode kicks in and we climb all the way up very quickly and move forward to 52 meters, 53 meters, 57 meters, 60, 70, 72 meters. So climb up pretty high, 73 meters, and then we start to descend. Still in rescue mode, still in rescue mode, 55 meters, almost back to the home point. Here we go, 70 meters, now we're looking at it at actual speed. And let's, things get a little scary heading toward those trees, so, and dropping elevation. So we put it into air mode, punch up to close to 100 meters, and uh, take, flight control back of the drone so that we don't risk crashing it into trees. Great example of what to expect if you activate GPS rescue. Your drone could just fly into trees next to where you took off. So it's going to put it's going to drop and if you're very close to ground or water you could lose it. So keep that in mind. Sometimes it's you know if you're within I would say in this case 30 meters of the ground you need to punch up first. I wouldn't recommend activating GPS rescue uh, below 30 meters unless you're actually at 30 meters. Be very conservative with your uh, elevation when you have uh, GPS rescue as, as a plan um, or a possibility in a flight plan. If you're more curious about how you can tune up GPS rescue in beta flight Configurator 4.5. I'll put a link to Joshua Bardwell's more in-depth tutorial below. But what I will say, as we go for our second test flight, is that this is an emergency system. Again, it doesn't work at all like the DJI system on the consumer um, drones that are just easy to fly and have returned to home. So you just really need to be a good pilot and don't depend on this unless it's... Um, just a last resort and if you do you want to be at a high elevation when you activate it and be ready for uh, to take back control don't put your 
your drone down and you take your goggles off and take your phone out to film. Okay, here we go. We activated rescue and we can see it dropped and then it popped up again. So now we're climbing and flying back very quickly. Now it's dropping and so now it's just kind of doing this up and down sort of thing, right? Dropping elevation, climbing again, going over the trees, dropping elevation over the trees, turning around, dropping down to 20 meters, 13 meters, now climbing back up from 13 meters, now dropping down to six, now climbing back up to 20. We don't know what it's doing. It's just dropping and climbing. This is scary. It seems like it's, who knows? So then we take over and we land, right? We just, when it got low, I disarmed the drone and just let it kind of crash land from a low altitude. Just listening to the sound of the drone being close to the ground. Okay, another test flight here. Back in air mode. We're going to fly even further away. So uh, we, we don't have a, an away from home point on this screen, but we've hit rescue mode here at 72 meters altitude. Now we're climbing to 92 meters altitude. It's pointing close to that home direction and uh, it's flying there very quickly in its rescue mode. This is a, a fast drone. It is not messing around. Um, unfortunately, we don't have airspeed on the OSD screen. I wish we did because this thing hauls back home. And then let's see what happens. So now it's back over its home point, still in rescue mode, dropping, 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 kind of turning sideways, kind of turning sideways, still dropping, turning around, dropping to 40 meters. Now it's going back up to 51 meters. Now up to 64 meters. Okay, now it tilts down 75 meters. We popped it into air mode because like it didn't seem like the rescue software had control over the drone and we're just going to fly it in air mode and just do a little bit of flying before we put it back in rescue mode to test it again. Okay. Why this is happening. I want to talk about some things that would be better than uh, GPS rescue that I could do to just improve my chances of finding the drone if it were to crash. Um, and that is to use an OSD setting of latitude longitude on the goggle view. And then I'll know where the drone is if it were to crash and GPS rescue were to fail. So that's one thing to do. The other thing to do is add OSD values for things like the amount of satellites you have and airspeed so that you could just have more pieces of the puzzle in case you lose the drone and you have to go on a search and recovery mission. Okay, so we're still in air mode here, just flying around. We're gonna dive through these trees. Super fun. And flying pretty close to the ground here, altitude's 12 meters. And we're going to do a GPS rescue attempt close to the ground. So, Right now we're just in between that like 10 to 13 meter altitude band. band. Signal's great, everything's cool. Pointing back home, flying slow and low. 10 meters, 11 meters, 12 meters. GPS rescue, crash. Let's, let's replay that crash footage in slower motion. So, we're going 75% slower video playback speed than we were in the real time feed. So we're making our turn, altitudes 14, 13 meters, and we're gonna switch into rescue mode and the drone's gonna drop and crash. So from 12 meters we hit rescue mode and it crashed at like 10 meters. So that altitude was off by about 10 meters and that was enough to take out the drone. So just re-emphasizing the point that if you activate rescue mode close to the ground, you could lose your drone. 
a better option would be to punch up or if you're new to the FPV game, switch from air mode to horizon mode and then punch up. In any case, I hope you learned something new today. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you around.